The nightmare came again, even more vividly than it did last time. My foals dying, killing Mom, looking into Wingnut's confused eyes as I slid misery through his side and into his heart. I heard the screams of the ponies who lived in Cartwheel as Windthrasher attacked, watched the mega spell fall and destroy the town I loved so much. Blood, gore, screams, death, pain, terror, confusion, anger. All of it replaying over and over again until... My eyes snapped open and my body riddled in sweat. I screamed, Wingnut, I'm sorry! I found myself face to face with a mare. One with a pure white coat, mane, and milky eyes. She backed away from me as soon as I started screaming. Her proximity to mine... A moment ago, just made me scream again and fall off the couch, trying to get away from the strange-looking mare. The mare ran and hid behind a chair Glory was sitting in before. Once my heart rate started to go down, I let out a long breath and asked, Who are you? I'm sorry if I scared you. I was having a bad dream. The mare poked her head out and looked at me shyly and fearfully. I've never seen a mare that looked like her before. She was very skinny, even more so than Windthrasher, which was saying something. Windthrasher was a head taller than me and weighed at least 50 pounds less. I waited a moment, then said in a kind of tone, It's okay. I won't hurt you. Can you speak? She let part of her long mane fall over one eye, like she was too shy to say anything. Then slowly she trot towards me. I put a hoof out, wondering if something was wrong with her. She came close, almost like a scared puppy, then gently pressed her forehead against my hoof. I stroked her mane and couldn't help but smile at the way she closed her eyes halfway, almost like she was enjoying herself. My name's Shadow. What's yours? I asked. She didn't answer, but she did pull away from me, looking a little happier than she was a moment ago. She trot towards the kitchen and looked up at one of the cabinets. She then looked back at me, then the cabinets again, like she was trying to tell me something. I got to my hooves, shaking my head a little, trying to rid myself of the lingering memories from the last nightmare. I slowly made my way towards the strange white mare's side, then opened the cabinet, only to find a bunch of wrapped snap cakes. The mare jumped up and down, then pointed at them with a the hoof. I smiled and pulled a few out, hoping Glory wouldn't care if a few of them went missing. I looked at the white mare, asking, Mind if I have one or two for myself? In answer, she took one of them out of my magic with her teeth, then started trying to eat the cake, wrapper and all. I pulled it back, saying, Let me open it first. I bent my way over to the kitchen table and set the cakes down, then tore one of them for her. She sat next to me and ate it quickly, getting filling on her muzzle. While she chewed, she looked like the happiest pony in the world. I opened another for her and watched as she smiled, then ate that one as well. Then she pushed one towards me with a hoof, watching me intently as she chewed on her second snack cake. For me? I asked. She nodded, so I opened it, then lifted it with my magic, and took a bite. It was good, filled with a cherry filling. I felt my eyes roll back as I enjoyed the treat, something I didn't get to do, well, ever. I saw her watching me and smiled and gave her another, which she ate slower this time, watching me as I ate mine. You don't say much, do you? Well, that's okay. My friends tell me I talk too much. Maybe I can learn a thing or two from a pony like you, I said, finishing my first snack cake, then opening a second. Something about her seems to make me feel better. You really shouldn't let Boo eat so many cakes. A voice said in my head. I froze in the middle of a bite, the snack cake filling falling from my lips and plopping to the table with a small thump. I only felt that kind of thing from one pony before, but the voice wasn't that of the only alicorn I knew, Violet. I didn't know much about alicorns, but from what I learned, they were the only creatures that could talk to you via your mind. Also, the rest of the alicorns in Equestria were under the control of a creature called the Goddess. Violet told me that they were all part of unity, and all of them shared a single mind, in a way. I found myself turning towards the front door, where there was a large, 
dark purple alicorn standing, watching me eat snack cakes with the white mare. She could have been Luna in the right light, but even from here I could tell that she wasn't the goddess of the night. She was also missing a cutie mark, just like Violet. The mare smiled at me and said in my head, Do not be scared. I am Lacuna. I jumped to my hooves and started to pull my magic. Before I could, I found myself trapped in a small bubble of magic. I tried to fire a spell, then remembered that my horn was still not listening to me. I glared over at the alicorn, Lacuna, saying, Let me out of this thing. Why? You are about to fire a spell at me, and I really don't want you to make a mess here or scare Boo. Blackjack would be upset if she came home to her place in tatters, and Boo scared out of her wits. Lacuna said, I've been told a lot of things about alicorns. One of those is to not trust them, I said, still glaring at her. From what I can tell, I am not the first alicorn you have met, she said with a chuckle. Yeah, but Violet's normal. Well, mostly normal. She warned me about the rest of your race, I said. I understand the distrust, but I assure you that I am not here to hurt you. I am one of Blackjack and Glory's friends. Now I will let you out of the barrier if you promise not to start throwing spells around, Lacuna said. I sighed. Fine. Not like I could anyways, but I couldn't let her know that. She removed the bubble, then walked over to the mare, saying, Boo, you know it's not time for snacks. Then she picked the rest of the cakes up and put them back, ignoring Boo's attempts to grab them. So her name's Boo? I asked. It is. Blackjack named her when she found her the other day. She doesn't speak and doesn't have much intelligence, but she's a very kind and likes snack cakes a little too much. Lacuna said, then looked over at me. You are the mayor who came here from New Pegasus, am I right? Yeah, but how do you know that? I asked, still a little weary of the alicorn. The goddess has been watching you for some time now, Shadow, Lacuna said. How is that possible? The only alicorns I know where I live are Violet and a couple of her alicorns. Alicorns she keeps under her control, I asked. The goddess has her ways of keeping an eye on ponies with great power. She has more than just her children to watch the wasteland, Lacuna said. So you're one of her spies then? Let me guess, you're here to report to this goddess about what security's up to? I asked. I have no much choice in the matter, but yes, though Blackjack knows as much. But I'm not like the other alicorns. I wasn't just sent here to watch Blackjack. I was sent here to keep the memories of the goddess once forgotten from rejoining Unity. I am a vessel created to hold all the negative emotions away from the rest. Lacuna said like it's no big deal. So you're come some kind of trash can for bad feelings? I asked. Or... Something like that? Something like that, Lacuna said, turning to make Boo head back towards the living room. I apologize. I did not want to bother you or anything, but the goddess wanted me to tell you who I am and to request a favor from you. I don't know this so-called goddess, but I'm not going to much into granting favors to creatures who have done such bad reputations, I said. We already knew this, but she plans on making you listen to her one way or another. Be thankful. Normally, we just force you into unity, and force you to do as you're told. But she wants you to work outside of unity. It's the only way for her plan to work. Lacuna said, heading towards the door. Follow me, please. No way. I'm not in the mood to deal with Nolicorn or your goddess. I said, turning to go back towards the kitchen table so I could clean up the snack cake wrappers. There was a flash of light, and a moment later I was standing outside of the star house, face to face with Lacuna. I am sorry, but she is not giving you a choice in this matter. I was about to protest her teleporting me here without asking, when I noticed a subtle change came over the alicorn. A moment later she got a cocky grin to her face, and her whole demeanor changed, even her voice. Hello, Shadow Star. It's nice to meet you at last. I am the great and powerful goddess. 
Yeah. Okay, nice entrance and all, but like I said before, I'm not falling for it. And I said as I was going to push past her and get back inside so I could go ask Glory about the holocorn. If you walk away, I'll have four wings of my holocorns kill Aura, she said. I froze and slowly turned back towards the grinning monster. If you touch her, I'll find wherever you're lurking and blow you to the fucking moon. Ah, you look so tough when you're trying to be tough. When I can see in your mind that you're really scared to death. And the goddess said with a giggle. You have no idea what you're doing, do you? You've never had a fight, one of my children, let alone understand our power. I don't understand a lot of things, but that's normal for me and hasn't stopped me yet. Also, Aura's a new Pegasus. If you could do something to her over there, then you wouldn't have waited so long to try and talk to me, or would have sent your alicorns there a long time ago to stop Violet. I said, feeling anger building inside of me. Oh, yes. Violet. That nasty little traitor. That's the only reason I've bothered to talk to you now, Shadow. She said, slowly uh, walking around me. My point still stands. You can't do anything to her right now, so why should I help you? I asked. Simple. The great and powerful goddess has her ways of getting what she wants and knowing what she wants. Even now, I know that Aura is heading east. Soon she'll be within reach of my holocorns, she said. So what? She's dealt with holocorns before she can hold her own, I retorted. True. She's dealt with us before, but that doesn't mean much. My children learn from every one of their sisters who fall in battle. You can't kill an holocorn the same way more than once. Now I just want you to do me one favor and one favor alone. I want you to use the trust violet has in you to seal back that amulet, she said. And why should I do that? I asked. Even if she does trust me, she's not going to just let me take the amulet. If I even get it away from her, she'll just fall back under your control. I couldn't do that to my friend. The goddess, speaking through Lacuna's mouth, said, You don't have to steal it. All you have to do is ask her for it. This one will make sure of it. When I take her control again, she's going to give you something that will convince Violet to do whatever you ask. And why don't you just send some of your own alicorns to get it yourselves? I asked angrily. Because if any of my alicorns get too close to her, I'll lose my hold on them. I need that amulet. Violet just doesn't want to be a part of Unity again. That's the only reason that she wears it. She said. From what I can tell, she needs it more than you do. She wants to keep her mind to herself, not join it with a, you again. Why do you think you need that thing, huh? To make yourself even more powerful than you already are? I asked. I need the amulet to make sure my children can procreate. Right now, I can only make female alicorns. I need either the black book that little Pip has, or that amulet to make sure the alicorn race can thrive she said. I was a little shocked by her admission. I thought that maybe she wanted the thing so she could get more powerful. No, she wants to make her so-called children a real race in Equestria. A race of powerful ponies, sure, but still one that could procreate. Alicorn foals. I'd never heard of such a thing before. Still, I knew her threat about Aura had to be true. I wasn't going to risk Aura's life just to defy a self-proclaimed goddess. But I also wasn't going to make it easier for her, either. So I asked, What do I get out of this if I get the amulet? I don't normally bother with normal ponies, she replied. It's the first time for everything. Now, tell me what you'll do for me if I do this for you. Threatening the griffin I love isn't a real good motivator for a pony like me. I kill monsters like you, I said. Fine. The goddess said. I can offer you three things. First is for Violet, more than you. I will not pull her back into unity. If she gives you the amulet, I will let her stay as she is as long as she never leaves the new Pegasus area. Second, I know that you are searching for. The towers for this Project Nightstalker was working on. 
I can give you memories that will show you where each tower is, and knowledge about what was done for at least one of them to keep the project locked down. Both of those things would be perfect. Arla didn't care either way what the goddess of Volicorns did or didn't do, as long as she left me and my friends alone. I locked eyes on the Cunas. And was the third thing? I will grant you knowledge for one spell, giving you everything you'll need so you can cast it. Any spell that she has stored is yours, the goddess said, sounding depressed she had to offer me something like that. Wait, you can do that? I asked. Only if you let a cuna into your mind, then yes, she said. My mind's a little crowded at the moment, but if she's willing to risk madness from a star demon, that's fine, I said. So, do we have a deal then, Shadow Star? The goddess asked, ignoring my statement. I put a hoof forward. The deal's the deal. She looked at me, a little confused. What does that mean? I smiled. It's an old tradition from the Crystal Empire my father taught me. It means that our deal is binding. It's like giving your word. The goddess, through Lacuna, smiled and took hold of my hoof in her own. The deal is the deal, then, Shadow Star. When you get the amulet, bring it forty kilometers past the dam. My alicorns will meet you there. Something came to me then, so I asked, Can you get me back home? The goddess smiled. The deal's already been made. You should have asked for that before you agreed. We'll talk again, Shadow Star. And don't you dare defy me. The alicorn's eyes blinked, then her voice changed back to Lacuna's. She's gone now, Shadow Star. You have my apologies. I did not mean to ambush you like that, but I had no choice. I sighed and slumped. I'm guessing it's not your fault. Honestly, I can understand what it's like to be taken over by something like her. Don't any of you have the ability to defy her? She shook her head. We do not, though I have greater freedom than most of my kind do. It hurts the goddess to be around Hoofington, even to use me to speak. She keeps the rest of Unity away from here. The voices are too much for most of the Alicorns. Huh. What is it about this place that affects you so much? Honestly, I think it's doing something to Aquila, too. I can barely feel her anymore. I said without thinking. Lacuna seemed to miss what I was saying. At least, part of what she replied. I have no idea what is at its core, but whatever it is, it is painful to creatures like me. So, is this what you're normally like? I mean, when you're not being controlled by the goddess? I asked. Most of the time, yes. She replied with a small smile. I hope you don't mind me asking, but who were you before you were an alicorn? I know a little about how you're made, Violet told me once. I know that all the bodies were once ponies, I said. This body used to belong to a sad mare who did very bad things. But my personality was no pony before. The mix of emotions inside of me created who I am from nothing. I have no soul, no real mind. I'm just lacuna, and that is that, she said. And that's kind of sad, I said. It is neither sad nor happy. It just is, she said. What would happen if the goddess decided to take all those memories back? I asked. Wouldn't you die? She raised an eyebrow. One cannot die if one has never lived. I am not truly a living pony, just a mix of memories that became a personality. I sighed and looked back at Star House. That's hard to believe. But I don't know you either, so I guess I can't argue with you on that point. Lucina walked closer to me, then sat down. That is true. Still, try not to dwell on it. Now are you ready for what the goddess promised you? I shrugged. Not really, but I don't have much of a choice now, do I? No, you do not. If you decide to go back on the deal you made with the goddess, she has ordered me to bring you to her and make you part of unity, she said. I laughed. Now that I'd like to see. I do not believe I have ever heard a pony say something like that when being told that they would be forced to join with us, Lacuna said. I'm sure you never met a pony with an evil star spirit living inside of her head wanting to join up either. 
though I'm sure Aquila wouldn't mind it much. Knowing her, she'd find some way within a month or so to take over the goddess's place as the ruler of your hive mind, I said, still chuckling. I'm sure that wouldn't be a good thing for the holocorns or the wasteland, she said. I'm guessing you agree with me on that. So first, tell me, what spell would you like to learn? I thought about it for a moment. As I did, I asked, Do you know any spells that can replace lost memories? It depends upon the memories you're trying to retrieve. There are many different spells that can help a pony remember. If the memories were blocked by spells or illnesses, or if they were taken away, it depends. Was the pony hit on the head, or was the pony poisoned? Also, if you want a spell that helps restore memories, some depend on the subject is a griffin, a zebra, or a pony. Some spells cover all creatures, while others are slightly different because of the minds of each living creature are different, she said. I have one pony that I'd like to restore the memories of. My mom had her memories of me removed, or blocked. I want to help her get them back, I said. She sighed. Your mother was attacked with the memory stone. That magic cannot be fixed once the three days goes by. That took me by surprise. Not her statement. The fact that I knew she knew who I was by talking about that and what happened to her. So I asked. How did you know that? Also, how did the goddess know about Aura? I didn't say anything to you about any of them. The Alicorn blushed. She fucking blushed. As she looked away, saying shyly, My apologies, but your mind is more open than most ponies. It makes it easier to see into your deeper thoughts. I did not mean to intrude, but it is hard to ignore. Think about it like walking into a room and finding an open book on the table in a house that is owned by a pony that you are trying to get secrets from. You cannot help but take a glance at what is on the page shown, because it might be useful to you. Well then, that was a strange and unique way of saying that you can read minds, and mine just happens to be easier to see into the most, I said, wondering if that has something to do with my closeness with Aquila. I guess your way of explaining makes sense, too, she said. But to answer your question again, I do not have a spell that can help your mother. I do not know much about the stone or what it can do, but I do know that none of the pony's memories I have know a spell to counter the effect. That's too bad. I was hoping I'd be able to help her remember me, I said, slumping over. I felt one of her wings drape over my shoulders. I winced for a second, then relaxed. If she wanted to hurt me, she'd have done it already. I wish I could help, but I cannot. I know. I was just hoping that I could find a quick fix, I said. I can teach you another spell. There has to be something that you would like to learn she said. Don't suppose you know shadow magic? I asked. Mostly being a bitch, but not caring. As far as I knew, Uncle Ori was the only pony who knew about dark magic. Even if he could learn it from what I saw with him, I didn't know. I want to know any of it. She shrugged. I didn't even know what that was. I figured as much. Just forget I said anything about it. That said, thinking more about what I would like to learn. The first thing that came to mind was combat spells. Things I've seen or read about that could help me in the future. But deep down, I knew that it would just put my mind to it. I could learn them without much difficulty. It seemed like a waste to use this favor on something I could teach myself. If I tried harder. I'd seen Violet and Mom both use shield spells before, and even though I'd never attempted them, I know I could do it. Those spells just seemed to make more sense to me. Almost like seeing them being used once. Told me how the spell worked. I could already teleport most of the time, so no use with that one. Maybe invisibility? No, I read Mom's spell book that used to belong to my grandmother and that those spells were extremely hard to do and draining. I could use a stealth buck for that if I needed to. Stronger telekinesis is out too. I really didn't have a use for lifting heavy things. So what could I... What could be helpful to me and something I was hard time learning to do? I could hear Lacuna giggle to herself. Alicorn can giggle. You have a very complicated mind, Shadow. Okay, that was starting to freak me out a little. I shook my head vigorously and groaned and whined at the same time. Separating my mind! 
I am sorry, but your thoughts are kind of loud, Lacuna said, suppressing her giggle. Then it came to me, so quickly, in fact, that I caught myself calling myself an idiot. My first request was the right one to make, but not a spell that could help Mom. That card wasn't on the table, but I could request to learn a memory spell. Those spells I've always tried doing after reading page after page of Mom's spell book about them. Mom was great at those kind of spells, but for some reason I couldn't seem to grasp the idea of them. If she had one that I could use, then maybe I could learn the rest once I understood the concept of one spell. I grinned and looked up at Lacuna. What about a memory spell? Not one for my mom, but something else? There are a lot of memory spells out there. You'll have to be more specific. I read in a spell book about a memory spell that was used by the Ministry of Morale to look into a pony's, griffin's, or a zebra's mind. He view a memory and extract it into an orb. Do you have one like that? I asked. She thought about it for a moment, then nodded. I do, but are you sure you want that spell? I could teach you teleportation, or a good offensive spell. Teleportation I can already do. And I'm pretty sure I can learn more expensive, offensive spells if I try. Memory spells, though, have been hard for me to grasp. I said. Okay, I will teach you the spell. But first, let me warn you about what you are asking. Memory spells are tricky, even if you learn how to use the spell properly. I can give you the knowledge on how to use the spell, but you will have to work to master it. Also, diving into memories of a living pony is a lot like going into a memory orb. First, you will experience the memory a lot faster than you would going through an orb. If you do it too many times at once, it can end up hurting you, so be careful with it. Also, the more you dig into the minds of others, the harder it will be for you to know what memories are your own and that of another," she said. If you're worried that I'll overuse the spell, then don't. I don't need it for a lot of things, but I can use it to help me learn things I couldn't before. Very well, then. She closed her eyes for a second, then opened them, slowly. Also, my last warning. This spell is powerful. But still, if you try to dig into memories of a pony who is of sound mind and strong-willed, you will find it more difficult to get what you want, and take more power from yourself to do so. Lastly, if you push too hard with the spell, you will break the mind of the pony you are trying to extract memories from. A mind is fragile and easy to break if you are not careful. Remember that before you're diving into the mind of another," Lacuna said. I felt like rolling my eyes. She did have a good point, so instead I just nodded. I'll be careful. You have my word. Her horn started to glow again. Good. Now hold still while I transfer my knowledge to you. I will also give you the locations of the towers you've been looking for. The Alicorn's horn came down and touched mine. Magic sparked between us, and I felt as if hundreds of minds were forcing themselves into me at once. The first wave of magical knowledge was quick. As soon as she touched my horn, I felt the magic flow into me, and the spell was simple to understand now. Once that was finished, another wave of information crashed into my head. So hard, in fact, I felt even a quilla flinch in the side of my head. For a moment, I thought she had to do something to stop the solicorn from digging into my mind like this. But strangely, she pushed further into my mind keeping herself as small and uninteresting as she could. It was almost like she was afraid of the alicorn. As soon as that thought crossed my mind, images started to flow into my head. The first one was simple. I saw the lucky horseshoe. Then I was moving towards it, into the top level and past a fake wall. I knew that wall. I saw a terminal by it when I was in Mr. Top's office last time. Behind it, there was a small sitting area and an another open elevator. My vision went down the shaft and into the sub-basement, where I saw another huge open space with a large terminal. The chamber itself was mostly a small room where the terminal was. A strange egg-looking pod and a glass window that looked over rows of wires, weapons, armor, secure ponies. It seemed to go on forever. Next to the terminal was a small platform, built the same way as the one in the underground power source for falling shadows. One of the last things I saw before the chamber vanished was a small pillar with a spot for one small gemstone to be placed into it. Then my vision was at the Crystal Empire. I flew into the palace itself and into the throne room. 
Behind the throne, there was a secret chamber, much like the lucky horseshoe had, only without the pod or the security ponies, or the pillar. Still, it had cables coming up from below that must lead to another power source. There was also another terminal, half the size of the other one that connected into something going straight up into the palace itself. My vision shifted again, and I saw a city in the distance, one I'd never seen before. It took a second for me to know where it was I was flying through as a sign flew by my vision that sailed, Welcome to Baltimore. I saw a building come into view. It was the tallest in the city, and as I got close, I saw that it said on the side, Equestrian Records. At its top, there was a large radio antenna, but it looked like a lot like the one on Lucky Horseshoe. I flew into the building and through a secret elevator that took me down to a smaller room with a single terminal in it, and once again, more massive wires and cables leading to a terminal. The last vision I got was of me soaring through what looked like a barren wasteland or desert, heading for a single tall white spire, AMS EBS Tower, but one that wasn't quite as tall as the others I'd seen in Equestria. This time I didn't go inside the tower. The vision stopped there for a moment, just looking at the door that led to the tower itself. As I looked at it, Lacuna's voice said, this is the last point, and the one most ponies don't know about, for the project you seek. Now watch, because this is a memory fragment that will help you understand how Falling Shadows was locked down. So I watched as the pony, whose memory belonged to, waited as a pegasus flew out the door and straight towards me, or my host, I guess. In a flash, an orange pegasus with a purple mane and a matte black pip buck landed out front of my host. She was breathing hard. But she had a grin on her face as she said, I think I got it. Then a voice I knew all too well, that of Minette, said, Good work, Apple Bloom, or Scootaloo. I'm glad that Apple Bloom and you both decided to listen to Sweetie Belle about the dangers of this project. Scootaloo, the president of Red Racer and the vice president of Stable Tech, was helping Minette? What was that? I didn't get time to think too hard about it because Scootaloo said, Yeah. What I don't get is why you're doing this. I thought you were the pony who came up with this whole project. I did. Now I want to make sure that no pony uses it again, Manette said. Check with Apple Bloom in Baltimore to make sure she gets in and out. Then make sure you two get back to Philadelphia. Scootaloo did something with her pet buck and then said, Apple Bloom's already on her way out the city, from what I can tell. She should be good. I'll start flying back now. But first let me ask you this. Why do you trust us with his secret? Magic flowed from Min's horn as she said, I don't trust any pony anymore. I'm just going to make sure you all forget what you did today, but leave a little fear about what you did learn intact so you'll do what you have to with all the three of your Mark Threes. And before Scootaloo could protest, Manette activated a spell. Lacuna's voice came again. Now do you see what Manette did to keep the project safe? I did. But I didn't dare say anything or even think about it right now, because if what I saw was true, that meant every pony was wrong about what was needed for Falling Shadows. I pushed the thought out of my mind as best I could, while Akuna started to pull herself from my mind. She was almost gone when another presence seemed to appear in my mind. As soon as I felt the pony's mind that was separate from Lacuna's, I knew who she was. Even before she spoke, I knew her. My great-great-great-great-something-grandmother's mind or soul, or at least part of the memories, were deep inside the mare. Manette's most painful memories and feelings were jammed into Lacuna, like she was nothing more than trash. Something about her seemed to know who I was, because she took hold of my mind, saying in a mad pony's voice, You need to understand how it works. You need to see what it does. If not, you'll never understand. What the hell? What are you talking about? I started to ask. Then I couldn't say anything else as magic poured into my mind, and a memory was forced into me, like a hot iron hitting my brain. Before the memory started, all I could feel was pain, 